Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about learning new chords and learning them as quickly as we possibly can. If you're like me and just about every other guitar player out there, it's usually the chords in a song, in a new song, that stop you from being able to play that song well right from the beginning. So we all want to learn how to play new chords quickly so that we can get on with it and start playing the song, right? So. Uh, I'm going to teach you some of my strategies on how to learn new chords as quickly as possible. The first tip I'm going to give you is that you always have to keep in mind that good technique is incredibly important. Now the technique that I'm going to talk about today uh, with regards to chord changes is putting your fingers as close to the fret as you can get them. I see this so often with students that they just put their finger anywhere between the frets. That's not good. You're going to you know, lead to certain issues. What you should do is keep your finger as close to the fret as you possibly can without going over. Now let me give you an example of that. If I put my finger right next to the fret, just like this, that would be ideal. This would be bad because my finger is over the fret and part of my finger has now crept over the fret to the vibrating portion of the string and that's going to create a dull muted sound. If I let my finger go too far back from the fret like this and again I'm aiming for the third fret here then I'm going to get a buzz and if I don't get a buzz it probably means I'm pressing too hard. And if I press too hard, I'm going to get a sharp note. My note will be sharp compared to what it should be. Like that. However, if I keep my finger right next to the fret, I can use the absolute bare minimum of pressure and keep the note in tune, and I won't have any buzzes, and it won't be dull. So for all the fingers in a chord, do your best to keep your finger as close to the fret as you can without going over. That'll give you a nice resonant sound, everything will be clear, you won't have any buzzes or pitch problems, okay? So technique is super important. Keep your fingers as close to the fret as possible. The second tip that I have for you is that most of guitar learning centers around your ability to repeat movements. The more you repeat movements, the quicker you will get better. So your ability to sit down, focus on a strategy, a drill, a sequence, and repeat that over and over again is really the major key to your success at learning a new chord quickly. So if you can sit down and play a chord over and over and over and over again, you will learn it fast. Let's say there's a magic number that you have to play the chord a hundred times before you feel comfortable with it. Well, you can get those hundred times done in a few days or a few months. That's up to you. That's, that's up to your ability to sit down and focus on that chord. But it's really just repetition, getting to that magic number. I always liked that idea because it was it told me that I am in control with how quickly I get better. If I can repeat more in a shorter period of time, then I'll get faster, better faster. So that always made me feel comfortable. It made me feel good. It made me feel like I was in control over my own guitar destiny. Okay, the third tip is a drill. This drill I found to be super, super helpful for learning new chords as quickly as possible. And I call it Build and Destroy. Build and Destroy is just taking a chord that you're learning. Like let's say you want to learn this G chord, right? A very popular chord, a great chord to know. The four finger G. If we want to learn this chord as quickly as possible, we want to be able to build this chord in midair. Now this is an important point. The last thing you want to do is learn to play a chord by building it one finger at a time. Now it's okay that when you start when you start learning a new chord that you do that just to get a sense of how the chord feels. But once you start to get into the re repetitions and really trying to get the chord under your fingers, what you want to do is be able to 
form the chord shape in midair and land all of the fingers down on the strings at the same time as much as you can. You want to land them simultaneously rather than build the chord one at a time. So a very good drill to do is to build the chord, make sure it rings out properly, and then lift the chord up slightly, lift your fingers up slightly, that is, and then put them back down and strum it again. Lift it up, back down, strum it again. Up, down, strum. Up, down, strum. Okay? Now, when you feel like you can do that really well, then lift it up higher. Go up, down, strum. Up, down, strum. When you feel like you can do that after many repetitions without any problem, this is where the build and destroy technique comes in. Lift your fingers up completely, remove the shape from your fingers, then bring them back down at the same time, form an chord in midair, shake it out, and then form it in midair and get all those fingers down on the strings, then strum it. Destroy it, build it in midair, strum it. Destroy, strum. Destroy, build, strum. Repeat that as much as you possibly can, and what you'll find is that you'll be able to play a G chord in any sequence of chords. It won't matter which chord comes before a G, you'll be able to play that G efficiently and confidently because you are forming the G from a neutral position, and that's out here with your fingers not forming any chord. So if you can form a G from this neutral position, you can form a G from any position, okay? So that's your biggest tip. Build and destroy, okay? Build the chord, lift it up slightly, bring it back, and strum it. Do that until you feel comfortable, then lift it up higher, build it again, strum it. Then, when you're comfortable with that, then go to the neutral position. Lift your fingers up completely, bring it down, and strum it. Okay? All right, for your next tip, tip number four is try to always learn a song that involves the chord that you're trying to learn. Drills and exercises are great, but they're kind of boring and they're pointless unless you are trying to use those chords in an actual musical context. So, if you're learning a G chord, find a song that has a G chord in it. Or better yet, find a song that has a particular chord in it that you don't know, um, and then learn that chord. Use a song as a motivation for learning new chords. All right, number five, and the final tip. Very important tip, and it applies to just about all things related to the guitar. That is, working on something every day is hugely important to your development. Your brain is constantly flushing things out of its memory to make room for new things. So, if you only play something once a week or once every few days, your brain will probably flush that, that muscle memory out of its system and you'll have to relearn it all over again, which, trust me, doesn't feel good when you have to redo work that you work so hard on. The best thing to do is to remind your brain that, hey, I want to memorize this. And the only way you can do that is if you play it every single day. If you play it every, every single day, your brain will say, hey, it seems like this guy or gal really wants to memorize this stuff, so maybe I'll put this in permanent memory. So working on something for five minutes, 10 minutes every single day is way better than working on, on it once a week for an hour. Trust me on this. You'll feel really good about your progress if you work on your exercises every single day. With these five tips, I am absolutely certain that you're going to learn chords more quickly than you ever have in the past. When you learn chords more quickly, you can play more songs more quickly, and you feel better about your guitar playing. So, get to it, keep on practicing, and let me know if you need anything.